did you pay a ridiculous amount on your winter gas bill? Well, it might surprise you to learn that Australia has massive gas reserves. Yes, that's right, our country is sitting on an abundance of natural gas, with places like the Gippsland Basin off the coast of Victoria boasting some of the richest gas deposits. Yet despite this wealth of resources, Australians are feeling the pinch, paying sky-high prices to keep their homes warm during the winter of 2024. This situation is not just perplexing, it's deeply unfair. How did we end up here? Firstly, take a look at this short news report from a year ago. Well, Australian households are facing higher gas bills from today. AGL, Energy Australia and Origin Energy will all increase prices. The increases vary, but Energy Australia says its average rise is 26% or about $480 a year. The gas industry has criticised the government for failing to have a plan to fix supply shortages as prices increase. A 26% rise in gas prices is ludicrous. Worse is the criticism that the gas industry had towards the government. Whilst both players are responsible, it's ironic for the gas industry to criticise the government for not addressing supply shortages and rising prices when the industry itself prioritises exporting gas for higher profits. While pointing fingers at the lack of government planning, the gas industry ignores its own role in creating these shortages by choosing to ship large quantities of gas overseas, leaving Australian consumers to face the consequences of their profit-driven decisions. With such abundant natural gas reserves, Australia has become one of the world's leading producers and exporters of natural gas, particularly in the form of liquefied natural gas, or LNG. The Northwest Shelf and Browse Basin are key hubs for LNG production, with gas extracted from these fields being processed, cooled into liquid form and shipped to markets around the world, particularly in Asia. Countries like Japan, China and South Korea rely heavily on LNG imports to meet their gas needs, and Australia has positioned itself as a major supplier to these markets. The economics of natural gas exports are compelling. LNG can fetch higher prices on the international market than it would domestically, providing substantial revenues for gas companies and contributing to Australia's export earnings. The infrastructure required for LNG production, massive processing plants, pipelines and export terminals represents significant investment, much of which is financed through long-term contracts with overseas buyers. These contracts guarantee a steady revenue stream and help justify the costs of exploration, development and infrastructure. Given the abundance of natural gas in Australia, it seems logical to assume that domestic gas prices should be low. After all, when a country has ample resources, shouldn't its citizens benefit from them? However, the reality is far different. Australians are paying some of the highest prices for natural gas, especially during the peak demand of winter. This discrepancy arises from a combination of market dynamics, infrastructure limitations and policy decisions. The primary reason for high domestic gas prices is the strong focus on exports. The international market offers higher prices for LNG, which incentivizes producers to prioritise exports over supplying the domestic market. When gas companies commit significant portions of their production to meet export demands, it reduces the availability of gas for local consumption. This limited supply drives up prices for domestic consumers. Over the years, domestic gas prices in Australia have become increasingly linked to international prices. This means that fluctuations in global LNG demand and prices directly impact what Australians pay for gas. For instance, during cold winters in the Northern Hemisphere, or supply disruptions elsewhere, international LNG prices can spike, and these increases are often reflected in domestic gas prices. The cost of transporting gas from production sites, often located in remote or offshore areas, to population centres adds to the overall cost. Australia's vast geography requires an extensive network of pipelines and storage facilities, and the costs associated with maintaining this infrastructure are passed on to consumers. In some regions, particularly in southeastern Australia, there are bottlenecks due to insufficient pipeline capacity, further driving up costs. Certain states in Australia have imposed restrictions on new gas exploration and development due to environmental concerns. For example, prohibitions on onshore gas extraction in Victoria and New South Wales limit the potential for increasing domestic gas supply. These restrictions, while addressing legitimate environmental and social concerns, contribute to supply shortages and higher prices. 
Unlike Western Australia, which has a domestic gas reservation policy that requires a portion of gas production to be set aside for local use, the eastern states do not have similar policies. The absence of a national gas reservation policy means that the domestic supply is more vulnerable to export-driven shortages, resulting in higher prices for Australian consumers. The high cost of gas in Australia, despite its vast reserves, is not just an economic issue, it is a matter of fairness. Australians are being asked to pay more for a resource that their own country has in abundance. This situation is particularly hard to accept when the exported gas is used to power homes and industries in other countries, while Australians struggle with rising energy bills. For families and businesses facing financial pressure, the high cost of heating and energy can have a significant impact on their quality of life. To address this issue, there needs to be a more balanced approach that considers both the economic benefits of gas exports and the needs of domestic consumers. This could involve expanding domestic gas reservation policies to ensure that a fair share of the country's gas production is available for local use. Investment in infrastructure to improve the distribution of gas across the country is also critical. Australia is blessed with an extraordinary geological diversity that has endowed it with vast natural gas reserves. These reserves are primarily located in offshore and onshore sedimentary basins, where the natural processes over millions of years have created rich deposits of hydrocarbons. The Gippsland Basin, for example, is one of the country's most prolific gas-producing regions. Located off the southeastern coast of Victoria, this basin has been a key player in Australia's gas industry for decades. The formation of these gas deposits is a story that stretches back millions of years. Let's take a quick look into the geology of the most prominent gas-producing basins in Australia, starting with the Gippsland Basin in Victoria. The Gippsland Basin is one of the country's most significant hydrocarbon-producing regions, particularly renowned for its substantial natural gas and oil reserves. Its geological origin dates back to the late Cretaceous to Paleogene periods, approximately 100 to 30 million years ago, when the region was part of a passive continental margin, during this time, extensive sedimentation occurred, with thick sequences of marine shales, sandstones and coals being deposited in a series of interlinked rift basins formed by the gradual separation of Australia from Antarctica. The organic-rich shales and coals became the source rocks for hydrocarbons, while sandstones served as excellent reservoir rocks. Over millions of years, the organic material was subjected to heat and pressure, generating oil and natural gas which migrated into these reservoir rocks. Structural traps formed by the faulting and folding effectively captured the hydrocarbons, leading to the creation of significant gas fields. The Northwest Shelf, located off the coast of Western Australia, is one of the most prolific natural gas producing regions in the world. Geologically, this area is part of the larger Carnarvon Basin and encompasses several major gas fields. The Northwest Shelf's gas deposits were formed during the Jurassic and Cretaceous periods, roughly 145 to 200 million years ago. During this time, extensive marine sedimentation occurred as the ancient Tethys Ocean covered the region. Thick layers of organic-rich shales and sands were deposited, which, over time, were buried, compacted and subjected to heat and pressure. These conditions transformed the organic material into hydrocarbons, which migrated into porous reservoir rocks. Faults and structural traps such as anticlines formed by the movement of the Earth's crust effectively trap these hydrocarbons, creating the significant gas reserves we see today. The Carnarvon Basin, which encompasses the Northwest Shelf, is one of Australia's most resource-rich basins, with extensive oil and gas deposits. Its formation began in the Paleozoic era, but significant hydrocarbon development occurred during the Mesozoic, particularly the Jurassic and Cretaceous periods. During this time, the basin experienced phases of rifting and subsidence, which led to the creation of large structural traps. Marine transgressions flooded the area, leading to the deposition of thick sequences of organic-rich shales, sandstones and limestones. These sediments were buried by subsequent sedimentation, subjected to heat and pressure, and converted into hydrocarbons. The presence of multiple reservoirs and seals within the basin has resulted in a complex hydrocarbon system. The Browse Basin lies offshore, north of the Northwest Shelf, and is another significant hydrocarbon province of Australia. This basin developed during the late Jurassic to early Cretaceous periods, around 150 to 100 million years ago, as a rift basin related to the breakup of the supercontinent Gondwana took place. 
The geological history of the Browse Basin is characterised by rifting, subsidence and a deposition of thick sedimentary sequences in a marine environment. The rifting process created large structural traps and fault blocks, which combined with the deposition of organic rich sediments set the stage for hydrocarbon formation. Over time, these organic sediments were buried and heated, generating oil and gas that migrated into sandstone reservoirs. The presence of excellent cap rocks such as shales helped to seal these hydrocarbons, creating the significant gas and condensate reserves now being developed in the field. The Bonaparte Basin is located offshore in a Timor Sea, north of Western Australia and the Northern Territory. It is a geologically complex basin that has undergone multiple phases of rifting, subsidence and sedimentation since the Paleozoic era. The Bonaparte Basin's hydrocarbon potential was significantly influenced by events during the Permian to Cretaceous periods, approximately 300 to 65 million years ago. During these times, the region experienced extensive marine conditions, leading to the deposition of organic rich shales and carbonates. These sediments were buried and transformed into oil and gas over millions of years. The basin's complex tectonic history has created various structural traps, such as faulted blocks and salt-related structures, which serve as excellent reservoirs for hydrocarbons. The Cooper Basin, located onshore in Central Australia, spans parts of South Australia and Queensland. This basin is one of the country's most important onshore hydrocarbon producing regions. Its geological origins date back to the late Carboniferous to Triassic periods, around 300 to 200 million years ago, when the area was covered by extensive river systems and swamps. These conditions led to the accumulation of large amounts of plant material, which eventually formed coal seams and organic rich shales. Over time, these organic sediments were buried and converted into gas through the process of heat and pressure. The Cooper Basin is particularly known for its unconventional gas resources, including coal seam gas and shale gas. The basin's complex geological history, including periods of subsidence and uplift, has created numerous traps and reservoirs that are now being exploited for natural gas production. Natural gas is extracted through a process that involves drilling deep into the earth to access gas-rich underground reservoirs. The process begins with geological surveys and exploratory drilling to identify potential gas deposits. Once a suitable site is found, a drilling rig is used to create a well that can reach depths of several thousand metres. The well is lined with steel casing and cement to prevent collapse and protect surrounding groundwater. In conventional gas extraction, the natural pressure in the reservoir forces the gas up the well to the surface. In unconventional gas extraction, such as from shale or coal seams, techniques like hydraulic fracturing, also known as fracking, or dewatering are used to release the gas. After reaching the surface, the gas is processed to remove impurities, making it suitable for use as a fuel in homes, industries and power generation. The processed gas is then transported through pipelines to end users or converted into liquefied natural gas for export. In a country blessed with natural resources, it's only fair that those resources should benefit its citizens. Australia's gas paradox, abundant reserves but high domestic prices, is a situation that calls for thoughtful policy and action to ensure that all Australians can afford to keep their homes warm, their lights on and their energy bills manageable. Let me know what you think of this dilemma that Australians are facing. And as always, thanks for watching. Are you interested in animals? I've just started the second channel called Paleozoology that discusses extinct and extant animals with a current focus on the megafauna that once dominated and roamed Australia. I've released a video on the marsupial lion which existed in Australia during the time Indigenous Australians walked a continent. I've also covered the wombat that was the size of a car, known as the Diprotodon, or the largest terrestrial lizard known as the Megalania. I'd love to have you along for the journey as more videos are released. You can find a link to this channel and to the aforementioned videos in the description and in the pinned comment in the comment section. Before I end this video, I'd like to give a big shout out to my Patreon and YouTube members. Thank you so much to everyone that helps to support this channel.